You don't need much imagination to guess the likely outcome of poorly secured cargo on a flatbed. Damage to cargo, loss of the load, damage to vehicles and other property, serious injuries or loss of life are among the obvious possibilities. That's why the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, the FMCSA, has made cargo securement a critical point of emphasis in the regulations and in its enforcement activities. In this program, we'll talk about key steps that we can all take to reduce the possibility of a cargo securement incident. We'll review the regulations and demonstrate pre-trip planning and inspections. In the U.S., drivers must follow the rules in Part 393, Subpart I of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations, or FMCSR. And when in Canada, drivers must comply with the National Safety Code Standard 10 and Provincial Standards. Essentially, the regulations say that a driver must not operate a commercial motor vehicle if the load isn't properly secured. The regs also state that a motor carrier must not allow a driver to transport a load that isn't properly secured. So, the regs put the responsibility for properly securing the load on both you and your carrier. Securing the load on your flatbed trailer doesn't begin after cargo is loaded onto the deck. It begins with pre-trip planning. Before loading begins, review the shipping information to determine the type of load you'll be hauling and the weight of that load. This will enable you to develop a plan for how the weight will be distributed on the trailer, the types and number of tie-downs you'll need and where those tie-downs will be placed and anchored. Two key concepts that you need to understand in order to develop a load securement plan are working load limit and aggregate working load limit. Yeah, yeah, I know you've heard them, but do you truly understand what they mean? Working load limit is the maximum load that may be applied to a component of a cargo securement system during normal service. If a heavier load is applied, the component could fail. The working load limit is usually assigned by the component manufacturer and may or may not be marked on the component. Here's a key concept. Determining the aggregate working load limit depends on how the webbing is used to secure the load. In this example, the webbing is attached to an anchor on the trailer, routed over the cargo, and attached to another anchor point on the other side of the trailer. This is called an indirect tie-down because the webbing is not attached directly to the cargo and the ends are attached to the opposite sides of the trailer. With this setup, you calculate the aggregate working load limit by adding together the full working load limits of all the indirect tie-down devices. Now you need to figure out whether you might need additional tie-downs due to the overall size of the cargo and its position on the trailer. So, let's consider positioning, specifically whether the cargo is prevented from moving forward. If the cargo is prevented from moving forward by a header board, bulkhead, secure chocks, or other secured cargo, you'll need to make sure you have enough tie downs for the length of your load. If it is not prevented from moving forward, you'll need to consider both the length and the weight, and you may need an additional tie down to prevent any forward movement. You're no doubt aware of the need for a pre-trip inspection, and we'll talk about that a little later. But first, let's talk about the importance of being sure that your trailer and tie-down devices are in good shape before anything's even placed on the deck of your flatbed. It's smart to do an initial walk-around to ensure that all anchor points are in good condition and that the deck of your trailer isn't damaged or worn in a way that could jeopardize your ability to secure cargo properly. When using tie-downs, your goal is to immobilize the cargo so that it can't shift in any direction. When attaching devices to the flatbed, use proper attachment points, which in most cases does not include the rub ring. You should know how to operate and tighten all the devices that secure your load. When tightening straps and chains, pull, don't push. This is safer for you and gives you better control. Also, try not to operate devices while you're standing on the trailer. 
It's far safer to be standing firmly on the ground when tightening straps. Your goal should be to do what's best and safest for you, your cargo, and others on the road, not just to meet the minimum requirements of the regulations. Additional inspections are required within the first 50 miles. And then again, every time you stop or park, or every three hours or 150 miles, whichever comes first. When conducting these en route inspections, think safety. This means conduct the inspection off the road, like at a rest area or truck stop whenever possible, or away from high traffic areas. Wear a brightly colored safety vest so that you're highly visible to other drivers. Never turn your back to oncoming traffic while you're inspecting cargo and securement devices. If you must turn your back, do it on the non-traffic side of the vehicle. As a professional flatbed driver, you're responsible for transporting a variety of important cargo on the nation's highways. A key element of this responsibility is ensuring that whatever you're transporting is secured in a way that protects the cargo, the vehicle, and the public. Training is only part of fulfilling that responsibility. It's also critical to understand the regulations, master the techniques, and recognize the potential hazards related to cargo securement in your everyday work. And you have to be willing to ask questions, learn new methods, and look critically at the loading of any cargo you're scheduled to transport. When it comes to cargo securement, there's no room for messing up, no second chances. If a strap or a chain fails while you're driving down the road or making a turn, you're the one who has to live with the consequences. Damaged cargo, lost time, increased insurance rates, high CSA scores. And that's to say nothing of the effect on the people around us if we get lazy and something goes wrong. By committing yourself to expanding your knowledge of cargo securement and using that knowledge on every load, you can ensure that you get it right every time. The alternative is unacceptable.